I am with How To Taxes with a video on line by line preparation of your 1040 SR. In the scenario for this video, you are single, but this video will be helpful for any filing status. At the top of the form 1040 SR, put your first name, middle initial, last name, your social security number, and your address. If you're interested in $3 going to the presidential election campaign fund, check the box under that section. Under the filing status section, check the box that you are single. Answer the question under the digital assets section. And under the standard deduction section, check the box that you were born before January 2nd, 1959. Please note that you can only use the 1040 SR if you were born before January 2nd, 1959. There is no tax benefit for using this form and it mirrors form 1040. On line 1A, put your wages so you can find this information in box 1 of your form W-2. In our example, it is 62100 I am going to skip lines 1B through 1I as they're not going to affect most of the people watching this video, but I will circle back at the end to explain them. On line 1Z, add lines 1I through 1H together to arrive at 62100 on line 2A, put any tax-exempt interest that you earned. On line 2B, your taxable interest. In our example, you had $1,600 that you earned from a savings account. This was reported to you on Form 1099-INT. Since you had over $1,500 of taxable interest, you must file Schedule B with your 1040-SR. Included here are some other situations in which you would also have to file Schedule B. At the top of Schedule B, put your name and Social Security number. On Part 1, Line 1, put the name of the payer, which is ABC Bank, and put the amount, which is $1,600. Carry that down to Line 2 and down to Line 4, as we don't have any excludable interest on Line 3. On Part 3 of Schedule B, answer the questions regarding foreign accounts. In our example, the answers are no. On line 3A, put any qualified dividends that you received, and on line 3B, any ordinary dividends received. You would have had this reported to you on Form 1099-DIV. On line 4A, put any IRA distributions that you received in any taxable amount on line 4B. On line 5A, put any pensions that you received and the taxable portion on line 5B. You would have received the information on Form 1099-R. On line 6A, put the Social Security benefits that you received from Box 5 of SSA Form 1099. On line 6B, put the taxable amount. I do have another video that I go through to help you determine how much is taxable, and I will put the link at the bottom of this video. A quick summary to determine if any of your Social Security benefits are taxable. You take half of your Social Security and add it to all your other income. If this is over $25,000 and you are single, or over $32,000 and you are married filing jointly, then some of your Social Security benefits will be taxable. Line 6C is for the lump sum election method. If any of your benefits are taxable for the 2023 year, and they include a lump sum benefit payment from an earlier year, by checking this box, you may be able to reduce the taxable portion. On line 7, put your capital gains or losses. An example of this is when you sell stock. Typically, when you sell a capital asset, such as a stock or bond, you need to file Schedule D in Form 8949. But there are some examples where you do not have to do this, and I have listed them here. On line 8, put any additional income from Schedule 1, line 10. Though in our example, we do not have any, some of the more common ones are alimony received, which you would put on line 2A. If you had your own business and filed the Schedule C, this would go on line 3. If you had rental property and filed Schedule E, this would go on line 5. If you had unemployment compensation, this would go on line 7. Note line 1 is taxable refunds or credits from state and local income taxes and you may have received a Form 1099-G reporting this. 
you would only report this as income if you itemized your deductions in the year that you paid the taxes. On line 9, total up all your income, which in our example is 63700 On line 10, you'll report any adjustments to income from Schedule 1, line 26. Though in your scenario you do not have any, some of the more common ones are educator expenses. Since you are single, if you were a teacher, you could deduct up to $300 on line 11. What other ones that are common are alimony paid on line 19A and student loan interest on line 21. On line 11, subtract line 10 from line 9 to arrive at 63700 for your adjusted gross income. On line 12, you will put the larger of your standard deduction or itemized deductions from Schedule A. You can find your standard deduction on the standard deduction chart on page 4 of your Form 1040-SR. In our example, since your filing status is single and you checked one box, in the age blindness section of the standard deduction on page one. Your standard deduction is 15,700. In this example, your standard deduction is the larger of the two. I do have another video in which I detail out how to fill out Schedule A. Now I'll put the link at the bottom of this video. In short, if you have medical and dental expenses that exceed 7.5% of your adjusted gross income, taxes that you paid, mortgage interest that you paid, and charitable contributions that exceed 15700 you should fill up Schedule A and take the itemized deductions. Since in this example you are not an independent contractor or you do not have your own business, Line 13 will be blank, and you'll add lines 12 and 13 together on line 14 to arrive at 15,700. On line 15, you'll subtract line 14 from 11 to arrive at 48,000 for your taxable income. Next, we'll calculate your tax using the tax tables beginning on page 65 of the Form 1040 instructions. Since your taxable income is at least 48000 but less than 48050 and you are single, your tax is $5,873. Place the amount on line 16. On line 17, we'll enter the amount from Schedule 2, line 3. Schedule 2, line 3 is comprised of the alternate minimum tax and the access advance premium tax credit repayment. The alternate minimum tax arises from a situation in which an individual has significant deductions against their tax, which creates a situation where their economic income is far greater than their taxable income. Since this isn't very common, we will not go through the calculation on Form 6251. On line 18, add lines 16 and 17 together to arrive at $5,873. If you had a dependent that qualified for the child tax credit, you would complete Schedule 8812 and put the amount on line 19. On line 20, enter the amount from Schedule 3, line 8. Schedule 3, Part 1 is comprised of non-refundable credits, including the education credit and the credit for child and dependent care expenses. On line 21, add lines 19 and 20 together, which in our example will be zero. On line 22, subtract line 21 from line 18 to arrive at $5,873. On line 23, you will put any other taxes that you have from Schedule 2, line 21. The most common one is self-employment tax from when you have your own business. In our example, this will be left blank as we don't have any. On line 24, you will add lines 22 and 23 together to arrive at your total tax of 5873 On line 25, you will put all your payments from federal income tax withholding. In our example, you have federal income tax withholding from your Form W-2, which you can find in Box 2. In our example, it is $6,000. Carry that down to line 25D. On line 26, put any estimated tax payments that you made in any amount that you applied for your 22 return towards your 23 return. Line 27 is the earned income credit. I have another video in which I delve into whether seniors can qualify for this and I will link it at the bottom of this video. 
Line 28 is the additional child tax credit from Schedule 8812. This credit arises when a taxpayer has more child tax credit than they do tax. On line 29 is the American Opportunity Credit. This is an education credit and it is the refundable portion. On line 31, you will put the amount from Schedule 3, line 15. If you filed an extension and paid an amount with the request for the extension, the amount that you paid would go on line 10 of Schedule 3. On line 32, you will add up all your other payments and refundable credits. In our example, this is zero. On line 33, you'll add up all your payments, which in our example is $6,000. You have an overpayment of $127. This will go on line 34. If you want it refunded to you, you will place it on line 35A. If you want it applied to your next year's tax, it will go on line 36. If you want your refund directly deposited into your bank account, you will complete lines 35B through D. If you don't want it directly deposited into your bank account, you'll cross off lines 35B and D and the IRS will send you a check. Note that there's a box to the left of line 35A. You would only check this box and complete form 8888 if you want your refund deposited into more than one bank account. Remember to sign, date, and put your occupation at the bottom of the form. As I stated at the beginning of the video, I will now circle back to lines 1B through 1I. On line 1B, report any household employee wages that were not reported to you on Form W-2. If you made less than $2,600, your employer was not required to provide you with a Form W-2. On line 1C, report any tip income that was not reported on line 1A of your Form 1040-SR. On line 1D, you would put any Medicaid waiver payments that were not reported on Form W-2, Box 1. On line 1E, you would put any of the dependent care benefits that are reported to you in Box 10 of your Form W-2 that are taxable. You will first complete Form 2441 to see if you can exclude part of all of these benefits. On line 1F, you will put any taxable employer-provided adoption benefits. The amount will be shown on Form W-2 in Box 12 with the code T. First, you will complete Form 8839 to determine how much of this is taxable. On line 1G, report any wages from Form 8919, line 6. These are wages that should have been reported to you on a Form W-2 by your employer but your employer incorrectly treated you as an independent contractor. On line 1H, you will report any other earned income, for example, strike or lockout benefits. If you're taking the earned income credit, you can elect to include non-taxable combat pay in your calculation to arrive at a higher earned income credit. If you elect to do this, put the amount of the non-taxable combat pay on line 1i. This wraps up the line by line instructions for 1040 SR. Thank you for hanging with me. I am from How To Taxes. Subscribe for future tax videos.